As regulators swarm Facebook, the company announcing changes to its data and privacy tool settings. Our next guest says, be a pioneer, delete Facebook. Jaron Lanier, chief scientist at Microsoft and author of the forthcoming book, 10 Reasons to Delete Your Social Media Accounts, right now joins us. Thank you for joining us, Jaron. Hey, how are you doing? So you argue that Facebook deleters are indispensable and should be celebrated. Why? Well, right now, the modus operandi is that we all think of Facebook almost like our government. We think of it as this thing we have to use. It sets policies. It tells us how much privacy to have, who to connect with, uh, how we find out about things. It, it creates a texture of our lives. And it doesn't just do that by itself. The only way it can make money is when it's paid by somebody else to influence us. And then when we want to change anything, we kind of go to say Facebook and say, oh, please, Facebook, change things, make the privacy settings easier. Uh, you know, and the thing is that we have no standing with Facebook. We're not citizens of Facebook. We have no vote on Facebook. It's not a democracy. And, and this, this process is not a way we can design the future. We can't rely on this single company to invent our digital future uh, in such a big way. So when people delete, it's not so much that they're effective protesters, it's that they're inventing what life can be like without Facebook. For now, they'll discover other ways of uh, finding news, they'll discover other ways of meeting friends, and those pioneers are showing us what the space could be outside of Facebook. They're an absolutely necessary part of having a democratic future. So uh, I don't think everybody plausibly can quit Facebook. I don't know if everybody should right now, but those who do are serving a role for all of us. It's, it's extremely important to support them. Yeah, uh, interesting, Jerome. Uh, the Journal has a piece out this morning uh, sort of examining the process of going through the deletion of Facebook. And they talk about the moment where when you start to unwind your account, the repeated warnings, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> do you realize you'll be gone forever? And somebody, they quote one, they quote one person saying, oh, maybe I'm making a mistake and maybe my life really, really will be over. <laughs> I, I have a confession to make. I've never been on it, but one of my cats has been on it just so that she can inform me about it. And she went through the same scare routine when she quit. And, uh, you know, courage and you'll make it. Hey, by the way, I'm not the chief scientist of Microsoft. I, it, it's part of a joke. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, my title's Octopus, so it's prime unifying scientist. Don't call me chief scientist, just to fix, fix that. But go ahead, please. we Will do. Uh, Jaron, I'm wondering, though, will deleting Facebook really do that much practically? Because one of the issues with Cambridge Analytica was it, is, it isn't just the people who took the quiz who got their data kind of sucked out. It was the friends of those people. If you've been on Facebook ever, or even if you live next door to someone who's been on Facebook and is in any way connected to you, Facebook knows something about you, and that's probably monetizable. Is there the argument that you need to actually engage with these companies, bring other forces and influence to bear on them if we're going to change this reality that we're living in? Well, both things are true. I mean, in my view, uh, Facebook owes us all money because all of its earnings are based on monetizing work we did entering data into it. And so, uh, you know, this in intense concentration of money and power is not something a society can sustain. So that's that's another angle on it. Of course, we have to engage on them. That doesn't mean we have to engage with them on their own turf, on their own rules. When you engage with somebody, you don't just tell them, you know, oh, please tell me how I can engage with you. You have to be able to set your own turf rules. I mean, that's the only way to be strong citizens. So it's essential that we prove that there are other ways to know people, to get news, to have a life without Facebook. If we can't do that, if we're so hypnotized that we view ourselves as absolute dependents, and if we even can ask the question you just asked, which is like, how can we even engage with them if we don't do it through them? Like, if that's what we believe, we can't be citizens anymore. To be citizens in democracy, you have to be able to stand. You have to be able to, um, you know, you have, you have to have pride. Where's our pride? Jaron, does your argument stop or start with Facebook and other social media platforms? I mean, the world is becoming increasingly digitized. We're becoming increasingly connected. Um, just yesterday, we had Apple announce an iPad initiative that's geared towards students and schools, for mm -hmm. example. How much further do you see this going out in terms of, I guess, disconnecting and deleting? Well, look. Um 
we discovered this trick in Silicon Valley, uh, and I, I, I think I speak for all of us when we say that it, that most of us have regrets right now. And the trick is, we discovered that we can make the digital devices that you use in your life addictive and manipulative. We can addict you by by squirting out little bits of positive and negative experience for you over time, just like you're a little rat in a behaviorist, you know, uh, experiment where if you do what we want, you, we give you some positive feedback and you don't do what we want. We make you feel bad and we do it just a little bit over time and we start getting you to do what we want. And if that's selling soap for somebody, I guess whatever, but if it starts to interfere with elections, if it starts to interfere with families and relationships, if it starts to just make society crazy and dark, then it's not okay. And uh, the worst thing about it is it just happens that negative emotions like fear and paranoia are easier to bring up, they're cheaper than the positive ones, so we've ended up making the whole society a little... Um, dark and paranoid you know like if you think back if you're old enough to before you had accounts with companies that 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 create customized feeds for you whether it's social media or something like YouTube that's another one um, I think you'll remember that you were a little less paranoid and the world was a little less crazy that it was still a little paranoid and a little crazy but we've, we've made it a little worse and yeah. that ultimately is even bad for us we can't survive that so we have to change our business yeah. model so that that's not how we make money Jerome Lanier, thank you for joining us today. Hey, thanks uh, for having appreciate me. It. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.